Hi there. Strong presentation skills were going to shape your career and your organization. Today I'm going to share six ways to start a presentation. My name is Michael Duarte and I'm a master facilitator and a Duarte Method expert, where I get to help powerful brands and people just like you improve on their presentation skills. The beginning of any presentation communicates a lot about you and what you're about to say. Should you be at the door smiling and shaking hands? Maybe. But not if you're delivering bad news, perhaps. People form a gut-based first impression about you in just a fraction of a second, so you need to spend time thinking through how they're going to perceive you. Now, many of the tips I'll share with you today are adapted from the book Presenting Virtually, Communicate and Connect with Online Audiences. It's written by my colleague and all-around cool person, Patty Sanchez. And while this is about online presentations, the principles I'll share apply to both virtual and in-person presentations alike. Start by creating a great first impression. And that impression starts the very moment your audience sees you, whether you're in person or on camera. So you wanna dress for the occasion. Now, this doesn't mean you need a brand new wardrobe, but rather it means if your audience is more formal in nature, you're gonna probably wanna be dressed up more formally. If they're more casual, then you wanna match that level of dress as well. And while it might seem at least somewhat silly, your audience is likely subconsciously at least, judging how you represent yourself. And don't forget about your brand. At Duarte, we're a pretty relaxed company, so we tend to dress to represent that feel, but we'll also match the dress of our audiences. And that's gonna change based on the level or the importance, perhaps, of a particular presentation. Well, I'm normally like a nice jeans and button-up kind of a guy, but for larger keynote-type talks, I'll step it up a notch. Maybe I'll throw on some nicer slacks, put on a jacket. But my all-time favorite talk was a workshop I had a chance to lead in Hawaii. I was in Hana, I was working this beautiful retreat, sort of meeting space um, with some really fantastic people in an Aloha shirt, shorts and flip-flops were about as dressy as I needed to be. And even then, I was way more dressed up than most of my audience, but it worked fantastically. And here's a bonus tip for you. Even though folks can't see your feet on a web call, put on shoes, please. It's crazy, but you'll take the presentation seriously and your audience is gonna appreciate that subtle shift. So start by creating a great first impression. When introducing yourself, go beyond saying, hello, my name is. It's true your first impression is nearly instant, but it's not your only opportunity to engage your audience. Nearly every presenter out there starts by saying, hello, my name is blank, and today I'm gonna to talk about blank. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing to do, it also misses out on an incredible opportunity to connect with your audience. Instead, consider sharing a shocking statistic. For instance, did you know that in a lecture setting, students start to lose interest within the first 10 minutes? Smart professors, they understand this and they'll break up their content into smaller segments. And they'll also change up, change up the dynamics to hold a student's attention for a longer period of time. We should be doing the same thing for presentations. You can also ask a provocative question. For example, I often start my talks asking people, have you ever attended a bad presentation? And immediately people interact. They'll raise their hands and say yes, and then they start to offer up attributes of a bad presentation. It serves two purposes for me. One, it gets my audience involved, and two, it helps drive up my own energy. Another alternative is to share a personal story. It doesn't have to be overly personal and sensitive or elaborate, maybe just a couple of minutes but it serves to engage your audience and to make you more personable. The third tip is to find common ground with your audience. And we often have people ask literally, how do I connect with my audience? And while it might seem simple, you look for common ground. In Resonate, we facilitate the process of finding common ground with an audience by having our, our participants answer a set of questions. The first question we think about what are our shared experiences? This could be common interests like sports, clubs, hobbies, or even past histories or memories like a previous company event we've attended together. From there, we ask, what are our common goals? That might be something work-related, like reaching a certain profit percentage or sales targets. Uh, it could be entirely different, though, like making sure every team member takes a vacation this quarter. And then lastly, and perhaps the most challenging, we ask, what are your qualifications? And sometimes people, people will struggle answering this, but it could be as simple as saying, 
my boss asked me to deliver this presentation. And while for some that might seem like you were voluntold, an alternative interpretation is that somebody endorsed you to deliver this presentation. And that can help boost your confidence. The next tip, hook them early with a strong opening statement. I'm gonna double down on this one. Ask a thought provoking question for all the reasons I shared earlier and so much more. You know, it's interesting what happens when you ask a question. People start to formulate an answer and even if they're not invited to share that answer, your audience will engage in your content actively and this is tremendous. We get so used to sitting and listening. If we're being honest, we tune out within the first 10 minutes. But if you can get an audience to engage on a question, it can drive their own interest and their energy. And if you have a longer presentation, that can make or break the success of that presentation by establishing that higher level of interaction early on. But even if you don't have a thought provoking question to ask, you can invite people to imagine if. You're literally telling your audience to engage in your content. It's a subconscious reaction and we'll start imagining if. When you introduce your topic of your presentation, tell your audience why they should care. And at Duarte, we do this through something that we call the big idea. And the big idea includes both your point of view on the topic, likely what you're asking, your objective, and it also includes what's at stake, that result or the consequence. Now, nearly every presenter can tell you what they're gonna talk about, but it's often just about here's the goals or the objective, and rarely does it answer that question why. Their talk may be to ask for approval on a project and it might even include an ask, I need this kind of budget or support. But most people forget to share what's at stake. For instance, in that scenario, your leader may not understand why they should respond to that. They're only gonna see a sacrifice they need to make of funding, resources, etc. The ROI, ROI may not be obvious to them. But by modifying the ask to something like, we need your approval so we can stay on schedule and on budget, you eliminate the ambiguity in understanding the why. By sharing what's at stake, you provide the energy and the urgency behind your message. Make the expectations clear for your audience. You know, one of the most important leadership lessons that I've learned is to make expectations clear for my direct reports. What seems obvious to me was not always obvious to my team. And that same principle, it applies in a presentation. Your goals, your purpose, your understanding, they may not be in line with your audience, so you need to set their expectations appropriately. You know, if you've taken the time to write your main message as a big idea, then you're already articulating the why. Make sure your audience understands and hears that message. This is gonna elevate the relevance and importance of your presentation. You'll also wanna provide context or background information for the topic you're gonna be sharing. This serves to both inform but also ensure that everybody is operating from the same understanding. And this can accelerate a conversation forward. And it's helpful to, to set the expectations about what you will and will not cover in your presentation. And this can be particularly important when presenting to senior leaders. And in those moments, I'll typically start by verifying the time commitment as well. I'll say something to the effect of, you know, I know we have 30 minutes scheduled, but can I take the first 10 minutes to share a few important ideas and then, sh and then we'll answer any questions you have in the remaining 20 minutes. That sets the expectation that there's important things that I wanna share, but it also tells them that yes, we're gonna take time to answer all those questions and have that conversation. Starting a presentation can be challenging, but by following these six tips provided in the video, create a great first impression, go beyond saying, hello, my name is, finding common ground with your audience, hooking them early with a strong opening statement, letting them understand the why, the why they should care and making your expectations clear. You can engage your audience early, resulting in more productive meetings and perhaps even getting your audience excited to listen to your presentation. Thanks for watching and good luck on your next presentation.